All right, we are, we are ready. All right, so good evening, everyone. This is the Needham Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, we're meeting on Zoom and we have the help of uh, Daphne Collins if uh, we have technical issues. And I think there's also Steve Gentile from the town that's available to help. Um, as I've said, all these meetings, if for some reason we lose internet and can't get back, everything is continued until next month. But um, for 11 straight months, we've managed to get through this without a problem, which is amazing and great. Um, we have three matters tonight, all are accessory dwelling units, but the first um, administrative matter is to deal with the minutes. Um, unless there's um, proposed amendments, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. So moved. You second, Kathy? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so I'll call the first matter, 16 Edwardell Avenue. Nader and Rhonda Sidham, applicants have made application to the Board of Appeals for a special permit under sections 3.15, section 7.5.2, and any other applicable sections of the zoning bylaw to allow the addition of an accessory dwelling unit. The property is located at 16 Edwardell Road in um, the single residence B district. On this, I think we have Mr. Genta. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. George Genta Jr. appearing this evening on behalf of the applicants and joining us this evening uh, is Nader Sidom uh, on this Zoom as well. <clears throat> so as indicated, this is for property at 16 Edwardell Road uh, in the single residence B zoning district. It's uh, shown as parcel 10 on map 26 of the Needham Assessor's maps. The lot contains 17,236 square feet of area with 80 feet of frontage on Edwardo Road. So it's a conforming lot. <clears throat> the lot was previously occupied by a single family dwelling. Uh, that, that structure was demolished person to a uh, issued building permit number 12018 uh, that was just fairly recently demolished. And right now there is a new two-story single family house that's being built at the, at the property, pursuant to a building permit, number 12019560. The new dwelling complies, uh, as you would expect, with all dimensional and density requirements. Uh, but what's before you is an application to include as a part of this dwelling that's going up, a, an accessory dwelling unit or an ADU. Now the ADU would be located wholly within the, the building that's going up, the house that's going up. Uh, and the dwelling unit would be occupied by Nabel Sidholm, uh, Nader's father. The ADU is located in the front right corner, generally of the house. Uh, it consists of 590 square feet of area. It includes a kitchenette, a three quarter bath, an open area for living and sleeping. The ADU is accessed from two points. The first one from a doorway that is off of the front entry vestibule that goes into the main part of the house or the principal unit. And the second uh, is a door that goes out to the outside, a, a small deck that's on sort of the rear right corner of the unit. Uh, the main part of the house or the principal unit is going to be occupied by Nader, his wife, and their two children. Uh, and as I already indicated, the accessory dwelling unit would be occupied by Nader's father. So the, uh, the ADU provisions of the bylaw provide that uh, ADUs can be, can be approved in the single residence B zoning district by special permit if certain conditions are met. Uh, the, those conditions are that, number one, there is only one ADU on a given property that the ADU is located inside a single family dwelling and not in an exterior or detached accessory dwelling, that either the principal unit or the ADU is occupied by the owner of the property, that whichever unit is occupied by the owner, the other unit is occupied by either a member of the owner's family or a caregiver or a caregiver's family. The ADU cannot exceed 850 square feet in area 
and can't have more than one designated bedroom. There has to be sufficient parking provided with at least one parking space uh, for the principal unit and one parking space for the ADU. There has to be adequate provision for waste drainage and so on. And there has to be compliance with building code with respect to egress. And in that regard, in addition, any access points, uh, there has to be an access point from the single family residence. Any exterior access points have to be consistent with single family. Um, and and oh, as I said, the interior doorway has to be, there has to be an interior doorway between the units. So uh, as you can sort of see, it's pretty simple in this application to see that it meets all the requirements. In this case, there's only one ADU proposed. Um, it's inside, wholly inside the, the single family house that's being constructed at the property. The principal unit is going to be occupied by the owners of the property. The ADU is going to be occupied by a family member of the owner. The ADU in this case is 590 square feet, so it's well less than the 850 square foot requirement. It only has one uh, bedroom. There's a two car garage as a part of the house that's being built. In addition, there's two spaces for cars in the driveway outside for a total of far, four spaces. So there is adequate parking in compliance with the bylaw. Uh, because this is a part of a single family house, there's no separate provisions for waste or drainage or such that would be required. So it meets that requirement. It meets the egress requirements with respect to the building code because there is both an interior and an exterior egress. And the exterior egress being located on the side of the house, sort of in the back corner of the ADU, you can't see it from the street and you can, you really can't even see it from the side. There's only one small vantage point really towards the back right corner of the property where you would really be able to see it. So it meets the requirement that it doesn't detract or is, or is otherwise inconsistent with the single family appearance. So this uh, ADU meets all of the requirements as specified in the bylaw and it's, a, it's an attractive dwelling that's being proposed. You would never know that there's an ADU in it from the outside. And so therefore we'd ask that the board approve it. All right, thank you. Um, so let me run through. The planning board had no comment. Um, the, um, excuse me, the building inspector had no comment provided that you meet the requirements of the bylaw. Fire department had no issues. The health department um, wants you to um, check for pests and have pest controls, but um, I, 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 I don't, I've said before, I don't think that that's an appropriate condition for a zoning permit. Um, th they can regulate that and you'll pay attention to it. The uh, engineering department has no objection. Um, as I think you know, we've on a regular basis been attaching a special permit condition that requires the owner to respond to the building inspector's request for information about who's living in the unit within 30 days. And if he, fa if he failed to respond, then the building inspector has a right to terminate the permit um, subject to an appeal to the board. And we also like to point out to everyone that under the bylaw, um, the permit is personal to the current owner. And if the property is sold, then the permit terminates and um, you have to apply for a new permit. So are there any questions from the board? I have uh, one question, George. If you can just walk us through the, the diagram as to exactly where the ADU is. It wasn't so obvious. It's so well hidden. Oh, George, I think you're still on mute. Yeah. How's that? Better. All, right. All right, so here you have the front elevation of the, of the house uh, from Eduardo Road. Uh, and the ADU is in this sort of, this part of the house right here. So as I said, you, you can't tell, you know, look, certainly not looking at it from the front, you can't tell that there's an ADU in there. And then, looking at it from the side. So this is the right side if you're looking at it from the front. And the ADU is contained in this section right here. 
And in fact, and, here's the, the doorway is sort of on this wall on the sort of around the corner. Okay, great. So that's the door to the outside right there. Thank you. Yeah. So so now let me show you. I'll go to the um, to the floor plan so you can see it there. All right. So here's the the first floor plan. This is the front of the structure. Here's the garage. There's the entry door here, and this is the ADU right here and again in the front right corner. So this is there's a front foyer hallway right here. Here's the interior door to the ADU. And then here's the open space, which is the living area and bedroom area, small kitchenette area, a three quarter bath with toilet sink and shower. Here's the egress door to the deck on the outside. Uh, and again, this you couldn't actually see it on that side elevation. We were looking at it from this side. But the only way you even see this door is if you were standing sort of up in this area. So. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's wholly contained within the house. It's really, I mean, in fact, the, the only distinction in this case uh, really that makes it the ADU is really it's the kitchenette piece that uh, separates it from just being another bedroom mm. that would be in a house. So, um, so it's, very, it's very well in integrated into the house and uh, very attractive and um, you know, very well thought out. Although I would say that the other difference is that it has two means of egress. It's not typical for ordinary uh, bedroom. Uh, true, although I have to tell you, I've seen several lately <laughs> where uh, there's a, a spe maybe more so uh, on sort of more luxurious, but I've seen a few with uh, sort of patios and verandas and things like that mm. off of a master bedroom. Master, right, right, right. It's, okay, it's, great. It's, Thank you, George. Any other questions from the board? Nope. Is there anyone from the public here, Daphne, on this? I see. Uh, we do have one raised hand. And um, Karen, I am going to promote you as a panelist. And all right, Karen should be should have joined us. I'm here. Yep. All right. Could you please give us your name and your address, please? Yep. I'm Karen Schakowsky at Nine Savoy Road. And I was just wondering about, um, in terms of occupancy, after this owner has, uh, if this owner sells the property, um, what are the rules in terms of, of occupancy the, the, in the that per, case? The permit terminates when they sell the property. They have to come for a new permit. Okay. Um, and then it would be, it would go through the same process, I'm yes. assuming. Okay, I guess that's the only, the only, of course, that's the only issue that most people would care about is if this could be a rented unit at some point. Um, and so I just want to, I'm just, I'm just curious about whether it's always going to be sort of an in-law suite. Well, it has, it has to be, well, I mean, um, yes, it, it, the kitchen would have to be removed if they didn't have a special permit. Okay. And um, it's over the concern that a non-family member might move in there that we put in this special condition so that you as a neighbor, if you thought it wasn't a family member, you go to the building inspector, then he can require them to demonstrate who's living in the unit. And it has to be a designated person under the bylaw. Okay, great. So Thank you. Certain Thank family you. members are a caregiver. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Does someone want to make a motion? Uh, sure. A move that the applicant's request for a um, accessory dwelling uh, permit under sections 3.15 and 7.52 uh, be allowed with the proviso that if the owner is requested by the building commissioner to document who's living in the, in the uh, ADU, the owner must respond within 30 days or the special permit is subject to revocation, uh, which could be appealed to the uh, zoning board of appeal in a public hearing. Second that, Kathy? Second that, yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Very, thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Right. All right, our second case is 1625 Great Plain Avenue. John Deneen and Cindy McGowan, applicants, to meet application of the Board of Appeals for a special permit under section 3.15, 7.5.2, and any other applicable sections of the zoning bylaw to allow the addition of an accessory dwelling unit. Properties located at 1625 Great Plain Avenue in the single residence B district. And who do we have on this? Um, Paul, contractor. Good evening, Paul. So why don't you uh, just give us a little summary of what you want yes, to do as a contractor? Yep. Um, it's an addition, basically an addition upside of the house is George kind of filled you all in on the info of the, you know, coding all that for the new, I know this is a whole new thing this year for Needham, um, the ADUs and stuff. Um, the only thing making it that ADU is the kitchen part of it. Um, so that's about 750 square feet, uh, roughly. Um, uh, so the mother is going to be moving there. Um, it's open to the inside of the house. Um, do an opening. Um, exterior wise, just keeping it the same look as the house so it doesn't look like it was a completely different part of it, so. Right, let me run through, I have a checklist. Yep. Uh, let me run through that and make sure this ticks all of those. It has to be subordinate in size to the principal dwelling. Um, it, it looks pretty, pretty large. It's almost as big as the, but I guess it's not all an ADU. There's some other things in there in the addition. Uh, just the garage underneath it and um, a stairwell, like a unfinished area to the left of it. Right. Um, and uh, it has to have uh, living, sleeping, cooking. Yep. Uh, and yep. Is there... One bedroom, one bath, um, kitchenette area with the dining, um, kind of a living area, living space to tap. Okay. And it has to maintain the appearance and essential characteristics of a single family house. Yep. Um, uh, the the owners of the property are going to occupy the main building, and I guess the ADU is going to be occupied by, did you say, a parent? Yeah, her mom. Okay. Uh, it has to be less than 850 square feet. You said it's 750. It has to be attached. Uh, what about parking? How parking many... is um, the garage on that side. Um, the main house is their parking to the right. Um, and there's going to be a uh, small driveway there for, you know, um, another vehicle or so. Okay. And then it has to have adequate sewage and drainage. I take it that'll be through through the main houses Correct. Uh, connections. Um, there have to be uh, two entrances. Can you just point those out to us? Uh, yes, there's one. I don't have that plan pulled up on here. So there's one going through to the main house. There's one front door at the next to the garage. Okay. Um, stairways have to be enclosed. And uh, as we noted before, uh, the permit expires if the property is sold and then Correct. we just have to come in for another permit. Yep. Um, all right, so let me just go through the comments. We have the uh, planning board had no comment. Um, fire department had no objection. Um, the um, town engineer pointed out that you need a stamped survey plot plan that needs to show the town's easement. There's apparently a town easement on this property. And also you have to comply with the stormwater Correct. provisions, which you have apparently not done to date. Yeah. Um, 
Right, because it's adding more than 25% of a new roof line on there, so. The, the health department wants you to do pest control if there's any kind of problem. And um, the building inspector has um, expressed some concern about the unfinished space. Okay. That's down below. Uh, what, what are the plans for that? Uh, nothing as of now. I mean, um, it's kind of weird that as you would go in, I guess, just, you know, the stairwell is right there. So, um, all right. So asking for it to be finished or keeping it unfinished for it because of the well, square. No, he's, he's just concerned that it might be added to the 750 square feet to take it over the 850. So, um, I, I guess we could just put in a provision that, um, right. It's on condition you with you uh, won't be expanded by finishing that space. Correct. Okay. All right. So anyone from the board have a question? No, do we have anyone from the public here on this? I think you said there were some people. Back there. Yeah, we have five attendees, but uh, none are raising their hands on this item. So we have no, no uh, raised hands at this point. Okay. So um, we ready for a motion? You want to do this one, Kat? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. So I'm just getting up my agenda. Um, so I move that we approve um, the applicant's application for a special permit under sections 3.15, 7.5.2, and any other applicable sections of the zoning bylaw to allow the addition of an accessory dwelling unit at the property located at 1625 uh, Great Plain Avenue with a few conditions. Um, one is the submission of a stamped survey plot plan showing the easement. Um, the next is to comply with the stormwater provisions um, as outlined in the yep. letter. Um, also to, let's see, submit any necessary um, pest control paperwork to the Department of Health and also with the condition that the ADU cannot be um, expanded by finishing the currently unfinished space below. And, and, and Kathy, also, would you accept our addition of our standard condition about uh, Correct. With a, a, a requirement to, the, to respond to yeah. a request from the building inspector to prove who's living in there within 30 days. Yes, so added. Okay, I second that motion Anyone as amended. Favor? Aye. Aye. All right, done. Thank you. Good All luck. Right. Thank you, guys. Take care. All right, so our third and final matter is uh, 86 Plymouth Road. Lakshima I'm going to mess this up. Bella Condra and Patrick Stern applicants to be an application to the Board of Appeals for a special permit under section 3.1.5, 7.5.2, and any other applicable sections of the zoning bylaw to allow the addition of an accessory dwelling unit to properties located at 86 Plymouth Road in the single residence B district. And who do we have on this matter? Um, Rick Leland, I'm the contractor on the project, and I'm joined with uh, Matt Brown, who's the architect. Okay. Patrick Darren and Lakshmi Balachandra, the owners. All right, why don't you give us a little summary of what's going on? So they had an existing home there that has been uh, permitted back in December, and we've taken the house down under permit number 20. 10059 and we have an additional permit to construct the home which is currently under construction in the very beginning stages uh, building permit number BR2010954 which was issued on January 28th 2021 uh, so the house has been taken down uh, new construction has started and we're requesting a accessory dwelling unit which is meets all of the requirements um, it is on the left side, 
back left corner of the house, approximately 830 square feet. Um, 830 or 848? 848. 848. Is it 848? All right, I had 830 on here, but okay, so 848 square feet. Um, it has a bedroom, uh, living area, uh, bathroom, laundry room. It has a, um, a separate entrance from the uh, garage. There's a, um, there's a two car garage on the house that's presently being built. Uh, one of them is accessible to the uh, ADU unit. There's also a rear egress going onto the deck off the back of the house. And uh, it has a complete kitchen with uh, you know, a, full, a full operating kitchen in it. Uh, can, can you show us on the floor plan um, the entrance that is connected uh, to the house? Yeah, Matt, can you pull that up? Yes, let me pull that up here. Okay, so here's the first floor of the main home. Uh, there's sort of a back stairway uh, to the second floor of the main uh, residence. There's an entrance into the ADU from that hallway. Um, a separate entrance from the garage into the ADU, which is this orange area, and then also a third uh, entrance or egress off to a back porch uh, that is uh, over the backyard of the rear of the house. Okay, good. Um, anything else that you want to say? I think it uh, it meets all of the uh, all of the requirements set forth by the bylaw. Uh, we can pull up the. Uh, front elevation too, as you can see, there's it, because it's in the rear uh, left of the house. You can't see it from the street or um, or the sides of the um, of the uh, house as well. The sort of back elevation is really it's, it's sort of the back rear corner. That's the uh, egress right where my pointer is for the back deck. Uh, so it really is uh, hidden from the street. Does not look uh, at all uh, like it shouldn't be part of the house. It is totally self-contained in the house um, and uh, and is under the square footage requirement as well. Okay, so let me just run through the comments. We have the planning board had no comment. Um, the building inspector has reviewed the plan and he thinks it's in compliance. He had it as 830, but I think you said it's 848. It's 848, yes. Still under the 850. Fire department had no objection. The health department wants you to do pest control. And um, as long as I'm on the right one, I guess the the engineering department had a number of comments. Have, have those been shared with you? Yes, they have. Okay, so um, you need you need to um, have dry wells for the runoff from the roof. Yes, and you know I, I think and basically comply with the stormwater requirements. And um, apparently you trigger some requirement for um, notice to the public, which you can work out with the engineering department. Yes. And what about this last one about the dimensions shown on the plan? Or is that perfect? Not match the current plan of record. Does that make any sense to you? I didn't hear that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Matt, does, Matt, Matt, does that make any sense? No, you, no, there was um, not there, sure. there was uh, some um, housekeeping at the beginning of the project. There used to be a uh, a throughway on the side of the um, on the side of the property that uh, that went up to the adjacent street. Um, so there was some record um, uh, discrepancy in terms of the deed, and that has worked been worked out with the lawyer since that that happened. Okay. Okay, well, you you have to work it out to the satisfaction of the engineering department with the plans and the building okay. inspector. And um, it should be just a mechanical thing. Mm -hmm. um, the um, stormwater drainage and all that had already been approved on the for the construction of this home already. So it's already, we've already had submitted a plan to them and it went through the whole, all the departments be prior to us receiving the permit to construct the actual new home. There was a whole design sent into them that was reviewed and approved. Okay, well, uh, if 
it's unusual that they would have put it into the letter, but maybe they overlooked it. And... I think what ha I think what happened um, is when they originally got this the ADU request, they were under the impression that it was being added to the house, and then we've since spoken to them, explained to them that the house is already under construction. Is this a piece of it that's being uh, turned into the ADU dwelling area? Nothing's changing on the house other than what it's actually being used for on the inside and the you know the kitchen area. The space is still the same. The walls are all still in the same place and all that. So that was uh, it was just a misunderstanding that's been cleared up already with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can, we'll just make a condition that yeah. you have to satisfy the requirements of the engineer. Yes. All right. Um, is there anyone from the? Well, first of all, does anyone from the board have a question? No, I think they did a nice job to present. Nope. Thank and, you. And um, is there anyone from the public, Daphne? Ask the architect to uh, please remove his. Um, yes. And thank you. Uh, no, we do not have any hands raised from the attendees. So we have no okay. comments from the public. Okay, so Peter, sitting on this one, would you make a motion, please? Sure. I move that the board issue a special permit under sections. 3.15 and 7.52 of the bylaw to allow the addition of an accessory dwelling unit at 86 Plymouth Road, Needham, Mass, as shown on the plan submitted to the board, subject to two conditions. Uh, the first being that the applicant will address the comments uh, raised in the uh, letter dated February 16, 2021 from the Public Works Department to the satisfaction of the Public Works Department. And the second being the condition that, that John alluded to before that uh, on written request by the, the building commissioner, the owner will provide evidence that the ADU and the principal dwelling are occupied in accordance with the bylaw. And in the event the owner fails to do so within 30 days, the building commissioner may revoke the special permit and there, such a revocation may be appealed to the ZBA. Second that, Howard? Second that motion, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So I think we're um, done with the business for the evening. Why don't I ask, uh, yeah, all set. We have to write a decision, but you're well in progress. Um, Kathy, why don't you write uh, one of the ones you set on? Yeah, I'll take the second one. Okay. And Peter, will you write up this one? Sure. And I'll, I'll do the third one. We'll give Howard a a uh, month off. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else we need to do tonight? I'm looking at George's picture. George, you still on this uh, Zoom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still on. Okay. You, you look like the Joker I, 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 and uh, I almost demoted you, yeah. George, but he always is very interested, so he stays on. All right, everybody. Thank see you next month. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Thank you. We're adjourned. Bye-bye.